I'm Ruby Peterson, and I'm here to talk with you about what you can do to best recover from your upcoming neck surgery. Having surgery is something we certainly don't look forward to. In fact, it can be downright scary. This is a normal reaction most people have. The staff here at Kaiser Permanente understand this and we'll do all we can to make things go as easily as possible for you. A tree grows, flowers bloom. We're fortunate that Mother Nature has given us the gift of life. But we need to take care of ourselves and sometimes have to take difficult steps to preserve and enhance our lives. We appreciate your courage in deciding to have surgery and we're here to support you. It's important that you carefully view this videotape to understand what you'll need to do to aid in your recovery. You may want to watch it with a friend or a family member. You may want to see this tape more than once. It might even be a good idea to take a few notes to help you remember what we cover here. Feel free to ask your doctor or nurse questions if there's anything you don't understand. Remember, you'll need to perform some simple hygiene techniques. Your quick recovery depends on understanding what needs to be done. Getting involved in this process will help you feel more relaxed and confident and will also speed your recovery. Remember, no food or drink 12 hours before your surgery. Ask your doctor if you're not sure of other restrictions prior to your surgery. Pack a small bag of items for your basic daily needs. Be sure to bring a bathrobe, non-skid slippers, and your Kaiser ID card. You may want to bring some reading material. We also ask that you bring a mirror on a stand and a writing pad with a pencil. Be sure to have a friend or family member bring you to the hospital and be available to take you home. This person will need to help you with the activities and hygiene techniques when you come home after surgery. You'll probably be asked to come to the hospital early in the morning. When you arrive, you'll change into a gown. If you're feeling anxious, let us know. We have medications to help you relax. An orderly will walk you to surgery. Your friend or family member may stay and wait for you in the first floor waiting room, but it's best for them to go home and get some rest. Depending on the length of your specific surgery, your companion may not need to return until early in the evening. After your surgery, you'll wake up in the critical care area. Your companion may visit you at this time. A nurse will give you a brief checkup, and you may see some other patient care specialists. Let your nurse know if you have any pain. We have medications to make you more comfortable. You'll be connected to an IV and to oxygen. The nurse will show you where the call nurse button is and how to adjust your bed. Hi, honey. It's me. How are you feeling? Here's your pad. Remember, you won't be able to speak after surgery. That's why you should bring a pad and a pencil. That will be your way to communicate. For a while after you wake up, you may feel like you're in dreamland. This is perfectly normal. It takes a while for the anesthesia to wear off. During your recovery, you'll be visited by several members of our healthcare team. These include your doctor, your nurse, the nurse educator, dietitian, social worker, speech therapist, behavioral medicine specialist, and a home health nurse. Everyone will do all they can to help you heal from your surgery and to teach you what you'll be doing as part of your recovery, both in the hospital and after you return home. But the most important member of this health team is you. Together with your companion, you'll eventually be taking care of yourself. So ask all the questions you like. Your recovery is largely determined by how well you follow these instructions to learn to care for yourself. As soon as possible, we'll help you sit up in bed and we'll teach you some deep breathing techniques. Sitting up and moving will promote better blood circulation and that will get you more quickly on the road to recovery. There are several things that will change after having the surgery. One is communication. You'll be writing things down for a while. Also, remember we asked you to bring a small mirror on a stand with you to the hospital? This will help you clean your face and neck after the surgery. When you look at yourself, you'll have quite a lot of swelling in your lower face and neck. 
don't worry, it's only temporary. Swelling is just a part of the healing process, and it will take time for it to totally go away. You'll probably still have some swelling even when you leave the hospital, but you'll look much better as time goes by. The swelling will definitely decrease. We use this model to show you what a tracheostomy looks like. After your surgery, you'll have a different way of breathing. You won't be breathing through your nose anymore. Instead, you'll have an opening here in your neck and you'll breathe through it. With a normal airway, you breathe through your nose. After the surgery, you'll breathe through a stoma or a trach tube. So rather than breathing through your nose, you will breathe through an opening in your neck. We'll explain this all to you after your surgery, and you'll get this pamphlet for further reference. The Kaiser Permanente nursing staff prepared it specially for you. After your surgery, you have a tracheostomy tube, or what we simply call a trach, in place. If you have a laryngectomy, or removal of your voice box, your doctor will remove the tracheostomy tube after about a day. You'll then have an opening in your throat called a stoma. Your doctor will tell you whether you have a stoma or a trach. Be sure to ask your doctor if you're unclear about this. Whether you have the tracheostomy in place or will have it removed and have a stoma, you'll need to clean it regularly while you're in the hospital and after you return home. It's easier than you might think. We'll show you how. After your surgery, you may have an incision on the side of your neck. When you feel strong enough, we'll ask you to look in the mirror and apply some antibiotic ointment to prevent infections. This is one of the first things you'll be able to do for yourself. Mr. Martin, one of the most important things you're going to learn while you're in the hospital is how to take care of your tracheostomy. In the beginning, I'll clean your tracheostomy along with the other nurses, but eventually when you're feeling stronger, then we're going to teach you how to take care of the tracheostomy because it's one of the things that you need to know before you're able to go home from the hospital. I used to be a nurse's assistant. I can take care of Sam. Well, you know, I really uh, encourage you to participate and we'll teach you how to do it as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, Mr. Martin, I really uh, want to encourage you to do your care because we have found that it really helps you regain your independence. This is the tracheostomy cleaning kit. It includes everything you'll need to clean your trach. Make sure you wash your hands before cleaning your trach. The kit includes a brush and a dressing with a V cut in it. You'll also have a bottle of peroxide and a bottle of saline. Pour about a half inch of peroxide in this tray and the same amount of saline into this tray. You need just enough to cover the inner portion of the trach tube. The inner portion of the trach tube is called the inner cannula. It unscrews like this. It's very simple. It comes right out. Place the inner cannula in the tray with the peroxide. It foams up a little and that means it's working. Then insert this little brush into the cannula and move it back and forth to clean it. This gets rid of the mucus. Rinse the cannula in the peroxide and then drop it into the tray with the normal saline. Swish it a little in the saline. This rinses off the peroxide and the mucus. Then take it out of the tray and shake it dry. Please don't dry it with anything. You don't want to have any fibers from a cloth or Kleenex sticking to your tube. After you shake it, it may still have a little liquid on it, but that's okay, it's not going to hurt you. Then you screw it back in. It locks closed. Make sure it's secure. You can hear it and feel it click into place to lock it. That's all there is to it. Then the last thing you'll do is change the dressing because sometimes you get mucus here. You'll need your mirror for this. The old dressing just slips out. Take a clean one and place it back underneath the trach ties. We can help you change your trach ties if they get dirty. If your surgery is a laryngectomy, the trach will be removed after a day or so, and you'll have to learn to clean your stoma yourself. You dip a Q-tip into saline and clean around the opening. Mucus tends to build up on the stitches around your stoma, and saline loosens this mucus. 
Then you take the plastic tweezers from the tray and pick away the dried mucus. It's important to keep the stoma free of a buildup of mucus. One of the first things you can learn to do for yourself is to apply antibiotic ointment to your incision. It's simple to do. You squeeze a little bit of the ointment onto the Q-tip. Then looking in the mirror, apply the ointment along the stitches. Be sure to get all the areas of the incision. The antibiotic ointment helps prevent infection. Depending on what your doctor says, you may or may not have a tube feeding. It consists of a high nutrition liquid feeding through a tube which passes from your nose to your stomach. Your doctor will tell you if you'll be fed this way. Your physician has probably told you that you'll be breathing differently. The nurse will show you how to clear the mucus from your mouth with a special device called a suction tube. Before too long, you'll be transferred to the surgical extra care unit. This is more like a standard hospital room. You can watch TV and have more visitors. This is a more relaxed setting. We'll still keep close tabs on your health. We'll also show you how to care for yourself and what to do when you go home. As soon as possible, we encourage you to start walking. It wakes up your body systems and gets them going again. Ask for help when you get out of bed for the first time. And be sure to wear those non-skid slippers. If you're active, you'll get well faster. If you're able to, you'll start eating on your own. You'll have liquids at first, and gradually your physician will let you know when you're able to tolerate more solid foods. It's important to follow the directions of your nurse and dietitian because different surgeries mean you'll be eating different foods. A medical social worker will drop in to discuss you and your family's needs during your recovery. Depending on your needs, you may have a home health nurse visit you at home. Other community health resources are also available to you. Before long, you'll be going home to fully recover. You'll have learned to take care of yourself, and you'll be given resources you can call on for help. Of course, should you have any questions, call us. That's what we're here for. Whenever you go outside, you may want to wear a scarf or an ascot on your neck to protect yourself from cool air. You'll want to make sure whatever you wear is not too tight around your trach or your stoma. You don't want to impede your breathing. If you have any particular questions that we haven't answered here, ask your nurse or your doctor. We all want you to be as comfortable as possible. Some questions patients ask are, can I swim? Can I take a shower? There aren't many things you won't be able to do, but swimming is one thing you'll need to avoid. You'll have no way to hold your breath. However, there's no problem taking a shower if you direct the shower head down and away from your tracheostomy or your stoma, or put something over it when you shower. A very helpful service available to you is a free TTY telephone. This lets you communicate with anyone who has a regular phone. You simply type in what you want to say. The healthcare team will help you get this phone if it's determined that you'll need one. We've tried to answer questions you might have about this surgery, and we certainly will work with you to make sure you know all you need to so you can take care of yourself at home. The nurse educator will go over this material again with you after your surgery. Shortly after surgery, you'll use a Q-tip and ointment to clean your incision. You'll need to clean your trach, including the inner cannula. If you will have a stoma, a Q-tip and saline is used for cleaning. You may have a liquid feeding through a tube after surgery. When you're ready to start eating, you'll sip liquids first. This video is intended to provide you with an overview of what you and your healthcare team will be doing to give you a speedy and healthy recovery. All this material will be covered by your nurse, and we won't let you leave the hospital until we feel you're ready. Remember, we're here to help you through this surgery. The hospital staff will show you and your companion what you can do to ensure a speedy recovery. So ask lots of questions. Become an active participant in your recovery.
We encourage you to take walks. Not only is it great exercise, it gets you out of the house and into fresh air. Remember to wear your scarf or ascot. Soon you'll be getting back to many of your regular activities and maybe doing more with your friends and loved ones. It's great to know you have people who care about you and support you. Actually, you're the most important person on your health care team. It's also good to know you're able to take an important step to improve your health and enhance your life.